sorry about that. I forgot I didn't have my headphones on. Greetings, YouTube. Ah, that's better. Uh, looking back along my videos, I realised I haven't done a video like this for quite some time. I don't mean a face-to-face -face one, because I do them quite often. I mean one where I just pace backwards and forwards, talking bollocks for five minutes. You know? I've never done this in a video before, I don't think. <laughs> the dual pendulums are swinging! Could be worse, I could do it like this, couldn't I? Looks like a very small set of those balls that you get on scientists' tables. You know what they're called, they're, um, they're called like, um, uh, it's like, ah, uh, shit, what are they called? You know what I mean, it's just a set of five balls hanging off strings and you pull one off one side and you let go of it and you go, for forever. And you can never stop them unless you actually just physically stop them. Like, they'll keep going forever and ever and ever. Perpetual motion. Now, if we believe scientists, and we believe science, most forms of science, it will say that perpetual motion does not work. Yet that stupid little set of the five balls infinitely proves perpetual motion works. It's called, like, somebody's cradle. Like Einstein's cradle, or Edison's cradle. I'm sure it's named after some kind of scientist, and it's called Cradle. You know what I mean. If I find out what it's called, I'll stick it in the description. Uh, but it's one of the ways of proving that perpetual motion works. Um, which is a good thing. Because I like when people disprove what people believe. And another way of showing that perpetual motion works, although with a little bit of help, is them things that swing backwards and forwards. You'll have like a semicircular thing with a rod going across it and like a like a dolphin over a ball or something. And you'll pull the ball back and let go and it'll just swing forever. Usually with some form of magnet at the bottom to force the ball backwards. But the the magnet doesn't really push the ball, it just sort of like reflects it. So it still carries on, it just doesn't slow down. That's perpetual motion essentially, but with magnetic help. You know what I mean, you've seen them things probably. There's a couple of them in the film Aliens. Believe it or not, I think that's all. Of course, one of the uh, one of the most obvious ones is the drinking bird. Like a set of two poles, or a pole going across it, and a thing that's set like a long bottle with a ball on the end, and the top looks like a bird's head, and it just constantly does this all day. You can make it look like the bird's drinking some water or something. Yeah, perpetual motion, that's how it works. And I love disproving what people believe, because it's absolutely brilliant. And I love having this knowledge of like random shit that nobody knows like peanuts aren't nuts so if you're allergic to nuts you should still be able to eat peanuts because peanuts are legumes a member of the pea family which means surely then if you eat a pack of peanuts at your local pub that's one of your five a day because they are in fact peas not nuts Although nuts, if, you don't, if you're not allergic to them, are also good for you anyway, in certain quantities, apparently. So is dried fruit. But is dried fruit part of your five a day? Because it's dried fruit. You know, the shit that you get in muesli and that sort of thing, you know, the bits of dried fruit, you know, and some raisins. You know, are raisins part of your five a day? Who knows? Sure, somebody knows. Like, who decides how much is one of your five a day? Like, one orange, or one banana, or one apple is one of your five a day. But how many grapes is one of your five a day? Is it a handful? A hatful? A cupful? 
F no, five. <laughs> five grapes is one of your five a day. That means if I eat 25 grapes, I have five from a five a day. <laughs> nah, no, I can't be right. But the point is that we caught all this crap and people just believe it. One of the best ones I've heard recently uh, is this new, uh, I think it's Ariel. You know, Ariel, the washing stuff, you know, for washing your clothes. Ariel have caught with this new little thing that you stick in your washing machine and it dissolves and all the liquid goes into your clothes and cleans them. Uh, it's got three different things in one. And it says it's the best one you can get. Yeah, until next year when one of the other companies invent a better one with probably four different things in it. I mean, we started off with the bold two in one. Then we had aerial liquid tabs. Now we've got this aerial three in one shit. I mean, and like Gillette. Gillette razors. They are born with four blades for closer shaving and less irritation. The best shaver you can buy. One year later, we've invented one with five blades that shave even closer for even less irritation. And it's the best one you can buy. Now we've invented one with five thinner blades spaced closer together for even less irritation. And it's the best one you can buy. Well, if the previous one was the best one you can buy, then this one isn't the best one you can buy, is it? No. And I'm quite certain the best one you can buy at the minute is Wilkinson's sword. So fuck you, Gillette. That's another one that annoys me as well. Male grooming companies. I was going to say beauty product companies. <laughs> for some reason, there. Male companies that make f products for females. And even worse, you've got. Uh, but but slightly better is you've now got female companies that make stuff for males because you had uh, Wilkinson Sword and Gillette Razors making ones for women and now you've got Shaw which make antiperspirants and deodorants for women now making them for men as well now there was a time a few years ago especially in clothing where men's shops were men's shops and women's shops were women's shops so you'd go into your local new look and you find only women's clothes I don't know whether that includes children or not but, but you'd find all the clothes for adults would be women's right? as far as I could see all the adult clothing were for females and you'd go, go into your local be a man's clothing shop. Uh, I can't think of one off the top of my head. Uh, I'm wanting to say Evans, but I don't think that's just for men. But yeah, you go into a local man's clothing shop, and all you would see for adults, as far as the eye could see in the shop, was clothing for men. Then it got to the point where these men's clothing shops had a small section in them for women's clothing but you'd still go into New Look and they wouldn't have a section for men's clothing so women's clothing store chains could still be inherently sexist but men's clothing store chains could not you could not have an all male clothing store because that's sexist however you could have an all women's clothing store And then they started putting men's clothing in the women's clothing stores because lots of people complained. And it wasn't just men who complained either. Women complained. You know, women actually complained <laughs> that women weren't being equal. <laughs> and this is the brilliant thing about equality. Which was one of the reasons I wanted to make this video today. Equality, you know, when women are treated the same as men, that form of equality. Not races, religions, whatever, just gender, right? Equality of women and men, right, is a funny one. Because women campaigned for several years, you know, back in the 50s or the 
six did whenever it was, you know, when they burned the bras and they did all their marches, you know, and the surrogates were not the surrogates. Is it the surrogates? The suffragettes, the surrogates. <laughs> the surrogates. The suffragettes were around and they wanted the right to vote and they all that you know, they all that mm, you know, that stuff. Um they campaigned for equality. They wanted to be treated equal to the men. They wanted equal pay for equal work. They wanted the right to vote like a man does. They wanted, uh, you know, every right that a man has, but for a woman as well. And they wanted to be treated equally in all respects. Well, that works two ways, darling. If you want to be treated equally in all respects, uh, that means nobody is ever going to give their seat up on the bus for you just because you're female anymore. If you're pregnant, maybe. If you're old, maybe. But just because you're a woman, nah. You want it to be treated equally. Sorry, it doesn't work both ways. Uh, no one. You can't expect people to hold the door open for you anywhere, anymore just because you're female. Because you want to be treated, you want to be treated like men, and we don't hold the doors open for each other unless we decide we want to. So we're not going to hold the door open for you unless we decide we want to. I mean, I still do. And all the other things that women get for being women, you know, all the nice things that women get for being women, they're not going to get anymore because. They want to be treated like every every man. So yeah, you're not going to get a seat on the bus, and you're not going to get the door held open for you so you can enter a place. You're not going to get. Uh, I don't think you should have. Um, uh, uh, it's not. I don't think you should have. But you're not going to get um, other things like. Uh, uh, can't think of other things now. If you think of some other things, feel free to whack them in the, com in the comments. But there are a lot of weird things that women still expect to get. Beca not because they should get them, but because they're women. You know, like holding the door open for them and stuff. They expect they should still get these because they are women. But they want it to be treated like men. Or equal to men. Well, you can't be wanted to be treated equal to men in one respect, but not in other respects. It'd be like a rich person saying, I want to be treat treated like a poor person, and then still be able to ride around in a Ferrari. <laughs> it's like a poor person saying he wants to treat you like a rich person, and still live on the street. <laughs> it's no good at work, is it? It's like a slave back in the old days saying he wanted to be treated like the royalty of wherever he is, but then still want to be given orders of what to do every day. Seems a bit pointless to me. I think it was uh, I think it was George Orwell that said all people are created equal, although some are more equal than others. I might be uh, paraphrasing that a little. I love that word, paraphrasing. It basically means saying something slightly wrong, but generally getting the point across. <laughs> like Darwin's theory of, theory of evolution. Everyone says survival of the fittest. But that's not what Darwin said. That's a paraphrase. Darwin actually said, It is not the strongest, nor the most intelligent that survives. It's the one most adaptable to change. It is the fittest one in that particular environment, essentially. So it's not survival of the fittest, but yeah, it's survival of the most adaptable. People love to paraphrase other people all the time, um, like uh, like the character of the Cheshire Cat in the game American McGee's Alice. It says. Uh, Every journey requires a first step. 
tried but true even here. And that's a paraphrase of a um, very old philosopher who said something basically along those lines, but not exactly. I think he said every journey begins with a single step. Or something like that. Uh, basically, the point is on the end of a pencil. Unless it's blunt, or you've broken it. So I have to answer this. You know, when you get a text from a very important person. You just have to answer it, don't you? And I don't just mean important as in like a family member, or a girlfriend. And I don't mean important as in like the Queen, or anything like that. I just mean, you know, important specifically to you. For whatever reason. And this person is very important to me. Uh, not going to say why. Because it's not for you to know. But the point is, on the end of a pencil, unless it's blunt, or you've broken it, and what I'm trying to say here is I like disproving what people believe. Like, and I like proving that what I am saying is correct. Like the first time I said to someone in a pub, I had had a couple of drinks, and I said to someone when they ordered a pack of roasted peanuts, I said to them that peanuts weren't nuts. And they argued the toss with me that peanuts were nuts. And I started the argument that maybe they were nuts because they thought peanuts were nuts. And by the end of the 10-15 minute discussion on whether peanuts were nuts, I pulled out my mobile phone and I hit Wikipedia. Because I thought, well, they all know the answer. And I called up the Wikipedia page about peanuts. And showed quite clearly it, that it states that peanuts aren't nuts, they are legumes, a member of the peat family, blah blah blah. And I proved my point. I love using the internet to prove my point. There are also other kinds of nuts that aren't actually nuts, but we're not going to that right now. Um, so yeah, I love disproving what people believe, and I love proving that I'm correct. One of the things I do love to prove is the existence of supernatural beings or otherworldly beings or whatever you want to call them. You know, like uh, you know, like ghosts, aliens, demons, angels, that sort of thing, you know. Proving the existence of ghosts is quite a simple one. Because there's always someone somewhere that's going to try and explain away what you've just seen. And you can explain it with a simple word, with, well, with a simple short sentence. It was a ghost. Now I've never seen things move by themselves. Right. I've seen ghosts, but we'll get to that in a minute. I've never seen things move by themselves. I've left the room and come back and things have moved. Could you walk back into the room and you go, something wrong in this room? And after a while, you realise that your cup that you put over there, or your pair of scissors that were up there, or whatever that wherever it was, has moved to somewhere else. Like one time, I think I've mentioned it in a video before. I was home alone at my house, you know, back in Boston. And I entered the front room in the middle of the night, and I thought something was wrong. And it see, it turns out that the TV remote was not where I left it. Now I'm quite sure, certain someone didn't unlock the door to my house 
which was going to be a difficult because I didn't have the keys on the door. Walk into my house, move my TV remote, and then go back out again. Quite sure that didn't happen. So somehow, something moved my TV remote in my house. And it wasn't me because I was asleep. And I definitely put it down next to the television on the unit the television was stood on. And when I entered the room, it took me a few seconds to realise it was on the settee. Those of you who have seen some of my older videos, you'll notice the layout of my room. And you'll notice that the TV was all the way over there, and the settee was here. In fact, in the video slideshow uh, of pictures called Marching Armoured Mutants, I actually take my pictures from the front window, which shows the TV behind me and the settee to my left. So, there's a fucking long difference, uh, distance for the remote to just take off and move by itself. So obviously, something moved it. And it obviously wasn't a human being. And the only pet we had in the house at the time was a rabbit who was in a cage in the living room. So yeah, so I'm sure the rabbit didn't miraculously get out of its cage, go over to the TV, pick the remote up and go and put it on the settee. So yeah, I've never seen objects move by themselves, uh, but I've seen that they have moved. And the only way you can explain this is something moved them, obviously. And if that something isn't human and cannot be seen, it must be some sort of force that we don't know about. Which we would naturally assume to be something spiritual. So a ghost moved the TV remote for whatever reason. Maybe it started to watch a little TV. Who fucking knows? Maybe it's a ghost of a man who always kept this TV remote on the settee. And upon seeing me put it down next to the television, thought, what the fuck are you doing? And put it back down there the settee. Who knows? The point is, it had moved when I entered the room. And I promptly placed it back near the TV. It never moved again. I think I sort of exerted my dominance over there. It's like it belongs over here! Fucking ghost! <laughs> of course, when it comes to seeing ghosts, yeah, I've mentioned this in previous videos, I have seen them. Uh, so, proving ghosts exist is a simple one. However, people say, do you believe in ghosts? The same way they say, do you believe in God? Now, we know God doesn't exist. So, the belief in God is a belief in something that we already know doesn't exist. Or well, the majority of people know it doesn't exist. People say, do you believe in ghosts? To mean the same thing. Like, oh, they don't exist, you just think they do. Nah. They exist. You wanna, if you want to call it belief, that's your problem. But they do exist. Ghosts do exist. And it has been proven that they exist. They have been programmed. And documentation. People have recorded videos of these strange goings-on that were originally attributed to ghosts and have proved that no other f way could these things have happened. You know, it wasn't a strange magical earthquake that only happened in your house. It wasn't the wind blowing the door shut or blowing it open or whatever. It wasn't just your kettle decided to fall off the worktop. These things were moved by an unseen force. And people have recorded actual spiritual presences. People have recorded corporeal, or well, non-corporeal, forms. You know, shadows, unexplained light sources, um, orbs, floating orbs, lots of floating orbs. And, and all sorts of things, you know, like uh, flickering lights in a place that has no history of electrical problems. Sudden areas of coldness in a room that's boiling hot. It's got nothing to do with, uh, you know, tornadoes, earthquakes, 
or just randomly things falling off things is actually attributed to ghosts and we have proved that it has well I haven't but it has been proved that ghosts exist and I have seen them so I can also prove that ghosts exist now aliens on the other hand yeah, it's very difficult to prove to prove that aliens exist because nine times out of ten the only people that have claimed to have seen a UFO or an alien or been taken away in a spaceship whatever are usually some drunk the weirdo who you know spreads this sort of bullshit story all the time sort of like Peter and the Wolf you're always talking bollocks and then when it actually happens no one believes you however one out of every ten actually could be telling the truth but we also disbelieve them because of the other nine that have said it and it's been bollocks however people have sort of proved parts of what they've said is correct like um, there's video recordings of, uh, of strange craft flying around in the sky uh, I myself have seen strange craft in the sky and people try to just justify it when I explained it to them you know saying that maybe it was a plane or maybe it was a helicopter or blah blah you know or maybe it was a shooting star or something and I discounted all those theories and said quite categorically what I saw I could not identify and it was flying and it was an object of some kind so therefore it was an unidentified flying object now I'm not saying it was an alien spacecraft but I'm saying it was unidentified I could not physically identify it was not a plane it was not a shooting star it was not a helicopter all I know is it flew gently and very quietly across the sky and then suddenly took off at a 90 degree angle to which it was flying and by that I mean straight up so, it's, so if you know a plane or a helicopter that can fly slowly along the sky and then fuck off vertically at such intense speed that it's disappeared before you can see it then you point that helicopter or plane out to me because I don't fucking know of any that exist even a supersonic jet couldn't turn its nose 90 degrees and point it straight at the sky and fuck off up at the top, at top speed at all I've never known a plane or an helicopter or anything that can do that the only thing I know that can go upwards at ludicrous speeds is a rocket you know like from NASA but then why would that be flying slowly along the sky first? So that looked like a very weird Usain Bolt stance, didn't it? So it flew slowly across the sky in complete silence and then went <laughs> without any noise whatsoever. It just went <laughs> gone. And I spent another five minutes looking at the sky waiting to see if it was going to come back or if I was going to see another one or whatever and nothing happened and when I've told people this they've said oh perhaps it was a plane perhaps it was a helicopter perhaps it was a shooting star maybe it was one of them Chinese lanterns that just fucking keep sending up into the sky for no reason they're fucking pointless they are they come along and they collapse into your hedge and they burn your fucking house down Uh, but yeah it was totally unidentified I had no idea what it was and all I knew that it was was unidentified I just knew that wasn't anything we could create or isn't anything we could create now I mean who knows it could have been an experimental spacecraft from our future Ooh. that's ludicrous that in a minute. 
fact, that's the next topic. It's time travel. Time travel. Time travel does not exist, and I firmly believe time travel will never exist. For one reason, and one reason only. Surely, if you invented time travel, the first thing you'd probably want to do is either go into the future and find some way of making yourself a fuckload of money today, like going one week into the future, finding out the results of a horse race, coming back to today and betting on the horse. A la Back to the Future. Or, you would go into the past and bring stuff into the present from back then, in perfect condition, like some f fucking good, um, you know, antiques, you know, that are still in as good a condition as the day they were made because you've just brought them through time. A la Good Night Sweetheart. There aren't many other f way reasons for travelling through time. You know, maybe you could go so far into the future and see what happens to the human race. Maybe you could go so far into the past and see, you know, what it was like for the dinosaurs, you know, or, you know, the cavemen. Ho hopefully they don't bop you on the head, you know, or, you know, see what it was like in the time of Julius Caesar. You know, go back in time and tell him, you're going to fucking die very quickly. You're going to spread your empire out across vast distances and then you will all be defeated. You know, go back in time to Genghis Khan and say, what's the fucking point? Go back to the time of Saladin and say, you will take Jerusalem! <laughs> go back to the time of like, um... the American Civil War and go up to the uh, the general uh, what's his name, uh, not Grant, did it Grant? can't remember which general was on which side now we go up to the, the one that loses and go you're going to lose <laughs> just walk off <laughs> go back in time to the days of when Sharp was set, you know, the film the film series with Sean Bean, and just, uh, you know, fight alongside Sharp's rifles, <laughs> with some up-to-date weapons, you know, check back uh, an AK-47 assault rifle. First rank, fire! <laughs> oh, sorry. Reload! I don't need to, yeah, I've still got 14 shots. <laughs> Go back in time with a, with a minigun! Yeah. I think all the French are dead. <laughs> go forward in time, pick up a laser gun, come back! And then go even further back in time and use a laser gun in the time of Julius Caesar. You know, all the archers there with the bows and you just go. Psh! Psh! God, I'd do it for a laugh. <laughs> like, he's gonna die anyway because your arm is about to hit him. Psh! Got him! Yeah! <laughs> but like Evil Dead, when Ash goes back in time and he becomes that, you know, the immortal warrior type guy that they've been. You know, talking about you know, because of the ch with the chainsaw and the shotgun. <laughs> this is my boomstick. This is my laser rifle. It'd be absolutely brilliant. I can't really conceive any logical reason to travel through time. However, going back to the point I was making, time travel doesn't and pr will probably never exist because we would have seen signs because someone would have come back to this point in time or some years ago or in a couple of years that we won't know about yet um, but someone will come back to the 21st century and want to know where the fuck humanity went wrong 
and in the future, you know, maybe humanity is a lot better, or maybe it's a lot worse, who knows? Maybe uh, the world does not think of dying, so they send someone back in time to change the past, which wouldn't work! Because you can't change what's already happened. That's the thing that books be about time travel films, where they go back in time and change things. You can't change what's already happened. Like if I decided to go back in time now and change it so that I was never thrown out of school at the age of forty, right? It wouldn't happen. Because while recording this video, I already know I was chucked out of school at the age of 14. Which means if I went back in time in four years after I've been in the time machine, stopped myself getting thrown out of school, I wouldn't be making this video saying I was thrown out of school. However, this video of me being thrown out of school, well, me saying I was thrown out of school, still exists. Because I'm making it. Therefore, I cannot change my past. Therefore, nobody can change any past, because the past is the past. You can't go back in time and stop the dinosaurs from being wiped out. You can't go back in time and help Julius Caesar conquer the entire world. You can't go back in time and make the South win the fucking um, American Civil War. You know, you can't go back in time and assassinate Hitler during World War One. Yes, Hitler was in World War One. For all, the, for all you people who don't fucking believe me, Hitler was in World War One. He was a soldier on the front lines, in the trenches, with every fucker else, and he survived and decided he wanted to lead Germany in the Second Fucking World War. But yeah, if I, went, if I went back in time and assassinated Hitler in World War One, he wouldn't be around to start World War Two. Therefore, me right now wouldn't know about World War Two, and neither would any of you. So therefore, I wouldn't have made this video. Well, I would have probably would have made this video, but I wouldn't have mentioned World War Two because it wouldn't have happened. See, see what I'm getting at here. So the point is, time travel does not work, and therefore, time travel will not work. However, the theories of how time travel machines and that sort of thing would work are correct. So why won't we ever build one? That's my question. Anyway, rant about time travel over. So many inconsistencies with the Back to the Future films, Jesus. Jesus! That was the next one. Jesus! So I just scared the shit out of you all, didn't I? <laughs> so I started thinking, Jesus! <laughs> ah, my fucking arm. <sighs> For those of you who know me, I've always had a bit of a problem with this arm. I'm sure recently I've dislocated the shoulder. Maybe. I haven't. Get up, but it just feels like I have, you know. Right, Jesus. Right, so Jesus. Jesus apparently existed. It has been proven that back in the time of when Jesus, the Son of God, was meant to have existed, there was a man called Jesus. And he did go around spreading the word of the Lord and all this crap. Yeah, however, he didn't do all the things that we attribute to Jesus. You know, he didn't cure the blind just by touching them. You know, he didn't turn water into wine. You know, he didn't feed 5,000 people people with five loaves and two fish. He didn't do all the fecking miracles that we all believe that, well, I say we all believe, we don't all but Christians believe it. He didn't do all these miracles, but he was like a prophet, and he did spread the word of God, and all that, but he just never did all the other stuff, you know, the magical crap. And when all this information was discovered, The high up people in the Christian religion rejected it all. In fact, they probably said it was heresy. Uh, people spread lies to uh, turn people away from the true voice of Christianity. <laughs> Who knows? That's what I don't like about Christianity, because they won't 
believed. Christians will say to you, you prove God doesn't exist. And when you do, they go, no, nah, that's not proof. But you can't tell someone to prove something and then not believe them when they do. It's absolutely stupid. It's like me saying to you, prove to me that the Egyptians created paper. And you're saying, okay then, this is proof that the Egyptians created paper. You could go back in time, get some Egyptian paper, and an Egyptian man. You know, the guy that fucking invented it. I say, look, this guy, he invented the paper. And then for me to say, that's not proof. Yes, it is. Of course, you'd never be able to go back in time, because we've already talked about time travel. But the point is, there's no point asking someone to prove something, if you're then not going to listen to their proof. It's like when you go, you know, when you've been arrested for a crime or something. You might not have committed a crime, you might have committed a crime, one way or the other. And there's only 50 50 chance of whether or not you did. Basically, you either did or you didn't. There's no middle ground. Uh, but the, the meme of it all is it's always innocent until proven guilty. But that's wrong. Because it's not innocent until proven guilty. Because if you're proven guilty, you were guilty in the first place. They should change the wording of that. Because then it, because that sort of says that you were guilty in the first place. You just believed you were innocent, and then we proved you weren't. However, it shouldn't be guilty until proven innocent either. It should just be, we don't fucking know until we can prove it either way. <laughs> That's basically what it is. When you're in court, we consider that we don't fucking know if you're guilty or not until we've proved it either way. And then we still might get the wrong decision. Because all the evidence can point to the fact that you murdered this person or whatever, when in fact you still didn't do it. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes people do go to prison for things they haven't done. Or go to prison as a result of things they have done. But because of something that they've supposedly done that they actually haven't done. Like if... This pair of scissors is about to fall off the table, sorry. Um, if you've been released on police bail, and you're told you're not allowed to go to certain places or see certain people, but people say you have, then you could, you know, have your bail revoked and whatever. Unless you can prove you haven't. Well, you shouldn't have to prove you haven't. They should have to prove you have. Right. But they can't prove you have if in fact you haven't. And you can't prove you haven't if in fact you have. That's the thing. And that's why I love that word alibi. Sorry, I'm walking too far off the screen here. That's why I love that word alibi, which means somewhere else. That's, that's actually what it means. It means somewhere else. Alibi. Somewhere else. When you have an alibi, it proves that you weren't anywhere near where the murder took place or whatever took place when it did. You could have been there later, you could have been there before, but you weren't there at that particular time. You have an alibi. You were somewhere else. That's simply the thing. I love how we can you know, convert a big thing like somewhere else into the little word alibi. It's like lawyers. Lawyers had that saying, didn't they? Um, uh, I don't know if they still have it, um, but I think they used to. And it was something along the lines of uh, habeas corpus ex post facto modus operandi. Which, if we break it down into the three parts, habeas corpus means produce the body, ex post facto means after the fact, and modus operandi means mode of operation. So if you put it all together, it says produce the body after the fact mode of operation, which makes no fucking sense whatsoever. 
He was like, oh, habeas corpus ex post facto modus operandi. <laughs> yes. Don't know whether they still use that or not. I don't even know what the fuck it means. I, I know what produce a body means. It means produce a body. After the fact means after the fact. Mode of operation means mode of operation. But the entire thing together makes no fucking sense at all. It's absolutely fucking ludicrous. But this was their saying for quite some time. Like, the family crest of my family, right, we are Irish, and the family crest of our family says, Fear garb, our mate. Which translates into English as here is a good rough man. What the fuck does that mean? What's a good rough man? Is that a person who's really honest, never does anything wrong, but will smash your face in if you disagree with him? <laughs> a good rough man. Or is it a man who's like really honest and really nice and whatever, you know, but just has a really big beard? Yeah, a good rough man. No. Or is it a man who is really good at his job, but just has a very bad looking appearance? You know, like it looks very rough. Or maybe it's rough as in like rough and ready. Maybe the word good means something different back then. But our family motto <laughs> is here is a good rough man. <laughs> What's the Mickey? Here's a good rough man. <laughs> it makes no sense to me. It's my family motto, and it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. At all. I just don't get it. My arm still fucking hurts. Maybe it's all the waving about I'm doing. Stop waving it about. I think. It's got a flop on now. About to inject it with some like new drug. You know, the one that's replaced Viagra. My dicks are flopping. Just inject some into my arm. But then that'll just make it go stiff. I don't want it to do that. Uh I have to use some gradual petrify. Yes, I've been watching Final Fantasy Nine <laughs> by Lancer D nineteen eighty four. Ah, that, oh, ah, yes, there's a, a, two other things that actually have been proven that they existed. Yes, well, three, actually. But one still sort of might not be correct. Uh, so I'll mention that one last. Firstly, the Knights Templar. Everyone who knows about the Knights Templar knows that they were, like, warrior priests. Basically, they were priests who rode around on horses with swords and shields you know, for whatever reason, and, yeah. They actually existed. We know they do. But what we don't know about them was that there was also another arm of it, uh, which uh, was always fighting against a particular type of people, who have also been proved that they existed at the time. And they were called the Hashashin. And they actually existed, been proven they actually existed. And, uh The two were enemies for quite some time. For whatever reason, I don't know why. I think it was a religious dispute. Once again, religion being a cause of fucking battles. But, yeah. And if you play the game Assassin's Creed, uh one or two of them uh, actually mention the Templars and the Hashashin. Uh, but that's not where I got the knowledge that they existed, because they actually did exist. They got the knowledge for the game based on the true knowledge of them existing, see? The third faction that existed but no one quite knows that they existed, you know, it's sort of like an agnostic thing. They may exist or they may not exist. Which I love that religion. <laughs> The agnostic religion. Like, God may exist, or he may not exist. <laughs> as Bill Bailey said, it's like saying, your guess is as good as ours. 
Um, the other group that may have existed or may not have existed, we haven't found enough proof either way. Uh, are a group of people called the Illuminati. Now the Illuminati are said to have been an invisible group of people who throughout history shapes the outcome of you know most of what happened whether it be battles or you know like peace talks you know the American Constitution you know, a any big decision that had been made throughout history is apparently partially accredited to the Illuminati otherwise known as the Invisible Hand now those of you who have played games like Deus Ex, or Deus Ex, whatever you want to call it, still sounds like an instruction, Deus Ex! Deus Ex just sounds absolutely amazing. Day of Sex. <laughs> but Deus Ex. For those of you who have played those two games, you sort of can get the gist of what the Illuminati was meant to be. Uh, especially the first game. Not human fucking revolutions, because that's pointless bullshit. But the first, the first ever do sex with the fucking crap graphics and the incredibly good sword. And yeah, the Illuminati are uh, they're just regular people like you and me who, over the years of history, passed down their knowledge from generation to generation and basically oversaw everything that was happening. They basically just watched stuff unfold and if they felt they needed to they stepped in and sort of helped it along or changed people's minds that sort of thing. Now the amazing thing about it is there's only a small amount of information that says they actually existed. And that small amount of information also suggests that they might still exist today. That piece of information suggests that they might have been, you know, quite prominent during the two world wars. They might have been quite prominent during the time of Julius Caesar, which is what I'm, which is why I mentioned time travel, because if time travel could exist, maybe the Illuminati weren't just prominent throughout entire history; they just went back in time and helped along the process. But by this, they didn't change history because we didn't know about it. Maybe they just made it happen the way we know it happened. It's like, I know I got thrown out of school at 14. So I could go back in time and help make sure I got thrown out of school at 14. Thus I would still be thrown out at 14. And all I would know at this particular point making this video is that I was thrown out at 14. I wouldn't know why. However, the me from two years from now, who has invented the time machine and gone back in time, knows a little bit more than me. Yeah. Um, so maybe the Illuminati weren't existing throughout the entire length of time. They just had a time machine at some point, maybe years in the future, and went back in time and did all this. But they didn't change anything much. They just sort of made sure it happened the way it should happen. Maybe the fact that they were there made it happen. Like, uh, like Star Trek First Contact. The film Star Trek First Contact. A Borg sphere goes back in time, followed by the Enterprise. And planet Earth has turned into a Borg planet. Now no one knows how the Borg 
planet Earth got turned into a Borg planet. However, the presence of the Enterprise might be a key feature in that because the Enterprise turns up, it sh fires on the Borg cube, uh, fire Borg cube, Borg sphere, which dies, you know, it gets destroyed and whatever, but the Borg manage to tele uh, transport onto the Enterprise and they take over several decks. So logic states that the only way the Borg will be able to take over the entire planet would be to do what they were trying to do on the Enterprise. That is, take over the entire crew, establish that uh, beacon thing, and call reinforcements from whatever quadrant of where the Borg is now to come and help. Right? So by the Enterprise following the Borg sphere back in time, they practically caused the Borg to conquer the Earth. Because if their ship wasn't there, then the Borg would not have captured it. Something else would have destroyed the Borg sphere eventually. And blah blah blah. blah. You know, maybe that Vulcan ship that was passing by would pass by and, and shoot at it, or something. You know, who knows what might have, we might have launched an ICBM at it. Or who knows? But by the FBI, by the Enterprise following it back, it basically caused the planet to be taken over. However, they managed to stop it being taken over, which means that when they were going through that temporal vortex, they wouldn't have seen the Earth being turned into a Borg planet because they've already stopped it being turned into a Borg planet which is why time travel wouldn't work right so either the Illuminati lived throughout history making big decisions and changing things or they just went back in time and helped all the decisions get made already that they were going to be made, they just made them a slightly better decision. Maybe in the time of Julius Caesar, the way he was going to do a battle would have meant he would lo lose. And one of the fucking Illuminati people went back in time and helped him win instead. Who knows? We don't know, because we wouldn't notice a change in the timeline. Because we don't know about it until it's happened. And, we, and it has already happened in the future for him to go back in time and help it happen. Well, he already knows that when he gets back there he knows exactly how it's meant to happen because he already knows how it's happened. This is getting confusing. <laughs> but yeah, apparently the Illuminati lived throughout our entire history and probably still exists today. The question is, well the two questions are, what the three questions are <laughs> that's like Spanish Inquisition surprise no something else and surprise no surprise something else and something else no the three questions are who are the Illuminati where are the Illuminati and what are they here for you know why do they want to shape our future you know why must they be the invisible hand I like that as well, yeah. Sounds like a very weird gang, doesn't it? We are the Invisible Hand! Really? We are the Warriors! That's a pretty good film, actually. It's like, <laughs> it's like this is going to be the best... It's the best name for a gang in the world, isn't it? It's like, we are the Invisible Hand. <laughs> the Invisible Hand. The weird thing about it is if you type Illuminati backwards into the internet, you know, www dot i t a n i uh, no i t a n u l l no wait I can't spell Illuminati now. One minute. If 
you type into the internet www.itanimulli.com you will be redirected to the website of the American Ministry of Defense which has led many people to believe for some reason that the American Ministry of Defense are today's Illuminati so over the course of the years the Illuminati have been completely invisible only shaping our history in certain ways and now suddenly they've decided to create a website and announce to everyone that they are the American Ministry of Defense I doubt that completely because if you're a secret group of people you're not going to want to make it that fucking easy to be found are you? No. I'm quite sure the president and the entire rest of the country will not want the invisible hand running the American fucking war machine. So no, I do not believe the Illuminati is the fucking American Ministry of Defense. Okay? Maybe it's a double ploy. Maybe they've done that to make you think it's not them. And then, in fact, that actually is them. But then maybe it's a double-double ploy. So they've done that to make you think it's not them. Therefore, you think it is them. Therefore, it isn't them. Or maybe it's an even further... You know, you get the idea. It's exponential. Basically, it comes down to a simple decision. They either are the Illuminati... The, the, Illumin the Illuminati... The can't even say it now. They either are the Illuminati, or they're not. It's like gangsters. If someone goes around claiming to be a gangster, chances are they're not. Because, like a spy and a secret agent, you don't go around announcing it to people. If I was a spy, or a secret agent, or a gangster, I wouldn't go up to people going, I'm a spy. You know, or I'm a secret agent. Or I'm a gangster. You know, you wouldn't, would you? So therefore, these people who go around saying they're spies, secret agents, or gangsters probably aren't. In fact, I can 100% categorically state that if you're going around saying you're a spy, a secret agent, or a gangster, you're a fucking liar. Because a spy, a secret agent, a gangster, or even an assassin which do exist, um, wouldn't go around announcing the fact. Because the whole point of being a gangster, a secret agent, a spy, or an assassin is no one fucking knows about it. Until you're about to kill them or something, you know. So going around telling people would be bloody stupid. You would be the, you would have, I mean, to do that you would have to be the stupidest spy, secret agent, assassin, or gangster in the world. And that's the weirdest thing. People actually do go around saying, oh, I'm a gangster, me. <laughs> I'm a gangster, me. I'll smash your face if you don't believe me. It's like, you are less of a fucking gangster than my pet dog. I haven't got a pet dog, but you get the point. It's like, you are less of a gangster than that fucking child over there. This big cat! I've got more chance of being a gangster than you didn't do it a dead cat here, by the way. <laughs> but <laughs> But you get the idea. I mean there's more chance of my little finger being a gangster than you. No real gangster goes around going, oh, I'm a gangster. I mean I walk like one, apparently. Uh but I don't go around claiming I am one. If people ask me if I'm one, I don't deny it. And I don't say yes either. You know, I don't say no, I'm not a gangster. I don't say yes, I am a gangster. Because if I was, and I said I wasn't, I'd be lying. And if I was, and I said I was, I'm a fucking idiot. And if I wasn't, but I said I was, everyone would know I wasn't anyway. For that exact reason. So, yeah. It's like it says on my Facebook that I'm an assassin and that I work for a company called The Agency. Uh, that's an inside joke on my part. 
It's a, it's a small joke between me and a small group of people. Uh, I think I've made a video about it before. Uh, well basically it's a small joke between me and a small group of people and we just sort of left it at that basically. I set it as my job on my Facebook so everyone on my Facebook can see. you know. And the agency uh, has its own Facebook page and you know it sometimes makes posts about like needing certain people killed and whatever you know and people will post you know I'll do it you know but we have one for Justin Bieber and I said I'll do it for free <laughs> I think I did uh, but yeah we, it's a bit of fun and we left it at that well we'll sort of leave it at that really um, but it's hilarious no one actually believes I'm an assassin. I mean, I could be, you don't know. I'm not going to tell you whether I am or not. Because, like I said with the gangs, for example, it would be absolutely bloody stupid. However, can you imagine, right, if, if one person was a spy, a secret agent, a gangster, and an assassin all at once? He will, he will be the most brilliant man or woman in the world. Could he do all the crap a secret agent does, all the crap a spy does, kill people without being found out, and run a cocaine operation or something, and no one would even know. People would suspect, but they wouldn't know. And they would have to find proof which might get them killed which will really be the only proof they need because uh, me digging around in your affairs of maybe being an assassin got me killed therefore you must be an assassin you know that sort of thing uh, but you know, that would be the most brilliant person in the world to be able to do all four of them jobs at once and nobody know about it <laughs> people go to him going are you a spy? no are you an assassin? No. Are you a secret agent? No. Are you a gangster? No. Then what the hell are you? I work in IT. Really? What's your job? I am the manager of a software production company. What do you make? We make media players. What's the name of the company you work for? Microsoft. Okay. Maybe you are an assassin. <laughs> I'm not saying all people that work for Microsoft are assassins, okay. But yes, assassins do exist. Now, we, we know spies exist. We know gangsters did exist, but we don't know if they still do because no one will actually admit to being one. Uh, we'd, I'm sure secret agents probably still exist. Um, sp a assassins exist. That's the weird thing. Assassins actually exist. And did exist. JFK was killed by an assassin. No one knows who it was, or who he was working for, or who she was working for. Yeah. But they know he was killed. And if you kill a president, you know, it's called assassination. It's called assassination anyway, really. Although normally, when you kill someone, it's called murder. When you kill a, 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 an important public figure, it's called assassination. I don't know why. But it says JFK was assassinated by a mysterious assassin. So therefore, he was killed by an assassin. You know, quite simple powers of deduction there. So, JFK was assassinated by an assassin. No one knows who he or she was or who they were working for. But that one news report proves the existence of assassins back then. The question remains, do they still exist now? I say probably yes. But, if I was you, I wouldn't go digging around trying to find any because I'm quite sure no one will want to be revealed as an assassin 
because the minute you find out they are one, they will probably kill you. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, you're an assassin! Bang! Shit. That's a little fucking body we're gonna have to clean up now. Tell you what, man, I was sick of burying the bastards in my garden. <laughs> Not the assassins, the people. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. It's a f f crap, but it's a good joke. I just fucking ruined it by trying to explain it. I wasn't intending for it to be a joke either. I just sort of wanted to say it for no reason. Um. I think that's really all I have to talk about. Uh. I do apologise if this video was incredibly long. I don't know how long this video is yet. Um. I do apologise for answering a text message in the middle of it. Um. I do apologise for wandering off the screen several times. I do apologise for having this dull and monotonous voice. <laughs> and I do apologise for deafening you all early on! <laughs> and again. <laughs> Hopefully this video was uh, informative in some way or another. Maybe it just helped inform you of the fact that I'm fucking weirdo. Although, if you've been watching my... YouTube account all this time and haven't really realised that yet. There's something wrong with you. Now, according to my uh, the frame rate thing, uh, there's a cost the bottom of my camera. It has captured 21,510 frames, and has been recording for 4,314 seconds. I'm not fucking working that out in minutes or hours. Uh, suffice it to say, this video is probably at least an hour long. But yeah, so hopefully you were able to watch all this video. And as always, if you have any comments, questions, theories, or whatever about anything I said in this video, please feel free to drop them in a comment or if you wish to have a more private discussion feel free to send me an inbox message uh, I will reply to all that I get uh, whenever I get them and uh, well that's about it really thank you all for watching and be sure to tune into my profile you'll see I don't call it a channel that fucking television. Be feel free to join tune to my profile for some more videos. Probably more videos like this, you know, face to face and more game videos and you know more music videos and, and whatever. And all the different types of videos that I upload. Um and I'm working on oh yeah that's what yeah, that's what it was. If you've watched this video to this point, I'm sorry I've waited this long to mention it. Uh but I mean, I was going to make a different video just to talk about it, but I can't be asked now. I've already sort of mentioned it. I'm going to be making her new beautiful eyes and beautiful friend, uh, friends video. You know, you know, from them two series. Uh, so whatever number there will be, will be. What will be, will be. What music I'm going to use, I don't fucking know yet. And uh, so, if you want to be in either of them, uh, then feel free to let me know. I've got a couple of people interested already that I have spoken to, and uh, mainly people online. Uh, you know, you get a lot of online friends. Um, what I would like to do is try and get more. It might sound weird, but I want to try and get more men into at least a beautiful eyes one, uh, because some men do have really nice eyes. Um, I don't know if I'm going to try and put any men into beautiful friends because it's usually friends who I think are beautiful and I can't really comment on whether or not a guy is good looking <laughs> because I don't swing that way and I can't really make that sort of comment however I will be making the two videos quite soon uh, I don't know how soon 
you know, depends how quickly I get some interest in them and, and that sort of thing, you know. It usually takes a, about a month or two after I've announced them. So I'm an, and I'm announcing them now. So they should be done by the end of October, maybe. Uh, I depends how many people are interested and that sort of thing. Um, as always, I will be making the videos using uh, Windows Movie Maker for all those who actually wonder how I make them. I just whack them into movie, Windows Movie Maker. I make each picture five seconds and I make them repeat so that each one will play for ten seconds normally. Depends how many people I've got uh, involved and how many pieces of music I want to stick in the video and that sort of thing. Uh, but sometimes, you know, mainly the pictures are either five seconds or ten seconds. And uh, basically, I just put the, the music on in the background uh, as the audio track, and that's it. So that's why people needed to ask me how I do that. I can understand people asking me how I make my split screen singing videos, but asking me how to make a slideshow is a bit pointless. <laughs> I mean, a slideshow is a slideshow, it's just a bunch of pictures and some music. You can make a slideshow on YouTube, I think video slideshow, not a picture slideshow, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be making them two videos quite soon, you know, start working on them. Um, as far as other videos go, we should be uploading them as normal, you know, like Warlords, Real Tournament, blah blah, random games, face to face crap, random bollocks, you know, got another singing one, another split screen singing one uh, I'm working on. Uh, just trying to get the lyrics right because, as most of you know, I will not sing a song unless I know all the lyrics, especially on karaoke, because I will not, I can't read the lyrics and sing them at the same time. That's why I'd probably be no good at giving a speech, and that's why I don't write a script for any of my videos. I mean, I'll, you'll see in some of my videos, I'll have a little list of things to talk about. I had that list of like a. Uh, had a list of things and I kept crossing them off the list, didn't I? Every time I spoke about it I went, oh I'll just cross that off the list now. And I did. Um But I can't read and, and speak at the same time. Um uh, I mean I can if I really concentrate. But if I really concentrate then I'm not my usual self and I come across as talking a bit slow and pointless and a bit kind of stupid and it might sound like I have some kind of learning disability <laughs> you know that sort of thing but if I'm um, but if I don't concentrate then I'll make terrible fucking mistakes and whatever I don't know it's just always been a problem of mine I think it goes back to the time when I used to speak really really quickly quicker than I'm doing right now actually uh, but the point is, on the end of a pencil, that I've never really been able to read and speak at the same time without making some kind of mistake or saying that I've got some kind of learning disability. And in fact, sometimes when speaking incredibly fast, I would also make mistakes while speaking, while not even reading, and have to go back and correct myself, or just accept the fact that I've said the wrong word. Yeah. And it took a quite a long time for me to slow down my speech, so that people could actually understand what I was saying. And uh, I also talk rather quietly normally as well. I'll go into like my super local supermarket or whatever, you know, to buy whatever, and I'll be really quiet about it. As I don't want anyone else in the store to hear me, even the person right behind me. So I'll sort of go up to the counter and I'll go like a 20 gold mark, please. Not can I have 20 gold mark, please? Is that 20 gold mark, please? Not doing a thing with the eyes, because that's, that's just like 20 gold mark, please. Just like 20 gold mark, please. And I always, nearly always have to repeat myself because I speak so fucking quietly. When I do these videos, you know, these videos, I. Uh, for some reason, I seem to be louder. Especially from stood over there. Even though the microphone is attached to the side of my face, and I don't have to be louder for you to hear me, I will still get louder. Because the difference, the distance between me and my laptop, makes my brain think you're further away. Talk a bit louder. 
Although sometimes I will stand back there and I'll talk just as quietly as I normally would. And it confuses the hell out of me, because my brain works in such weird ways sometimes. My brain must be God, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways, so does my brain. Maybe that's it, maybe God does exist, he is your brain. <laughs> Maybe God is the computer, because your computer will work in some weird fucking ways sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, I'm going to be continuing with my regular videos as regular, or as irregular as possible. And, um, yeah. Still looking for people to do collaboration videos with, so if you're interested, let me know. And other than that, that's about all I have to say. So, thank you for watching this video, again. Uh, I apologise again if it's far too long. Uh, but hopefully you got to the end of it, without being bored out of your mind. And hopefully I didn't scare the shit out of you when I shouted. Twice. Was it twice? Sure it was twice. One, one, two, three, yeah. Yeah, twice, yeah. And, yeah, so thank you for watching, and you'll see me again soon. That sounds more like a threat than a promise now, doesn't it? <laughs> It's like, you'll see me again soon, you bastard! No! <laughs> Actually, I don't think I could say anything like that in a menacing way. Like, you will be seeing me again. <laughs> it just sounds... It doesn't sound as menacing when I say it, you know, like, um... If you cross me, I will be back. It just doesn't sound as menacing, does it? You know, I will find you. I will find you. I'll find you next to me. Next to me! Woohoo! <laughs> God, didn't knock it out, eh? Fucking hell. <coughs> anyway, yeah, bye. <laughs> Why am I saluting? I did that sometimes as well for no reason. I was like, bye. Dib dib. I was never in the scouts, but yeah. Peace and long life. Live long and prosper.